Confidence is not a fluke. Confidence is a choice. And it begins with our mindset. In this podcast, you will find a variety of research-proven strategies that will lead you from being self-critical, your worst enemy, to be the most confident version of yourself. I am Olga, former therapist, confidence life coach, blissfully an IVF mother, a wife, and this is the Journey to Happy Podcast. Welcome everybody to the Journey to Happy podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a subject I love diving into and I love practicing, okay, which is having difficult conversations. I am Olga, your host. I am a former therapist. I am a mindset life coach for women. And I believe with my entire existence that the only way to sustain long-term healthy relationships is by growing our ability to have difficult conversations. But we're going to dive into that in a moment. I simply wanted to say hello and thank you to all of you listening. There is a lot of new listeners. There is a lot of old listeners. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for keep coming back. And I ask you to please share the episodes that speak to you the most with others that other people can actually benefit. The only reason I do this podcast is because I'm on a mission to change and to impact the lives of as many people as I can possibly. So you can be a help for me in doing so by sharing, by telling others of the podcast, especially of those episodes that you found transformational. I wanted to share with you a testimonial that I got from somebody who was listening to the podcast and she is now inside Reset Your Mindset, my coaching group. She said to me, Hi, Olga. I heard you talk first at a bereavement group when I had just lost my son. And I wanted to say that I've been following your podcast ever since. Your podcast on how to lose the fear of having emotions helped me have the strength to conceive one more time. I'm currently 16 weeks pregnant and I have nothing but gratitude for you. I'm now looking into being coached by you because being pregnant the second time is very triggering. How do we get a hold of you? First of all, I don't think anything makes me happier than seeing a woman or hearing from a woman taking courageous action to do the thing that they're terrified of doing. After pregnancy loss, if you've never had one, I think you can relate to this. After losing the thing that you love the most, it is terrifying to put yourself back into that place of vulnerability. And if one of my episodes was the thing that did that for you, frick, I will keep recording because I want to have this kind of impact in more lives. And I'm happy to report she's on week five now of the cohort that I'm currently running of Reset to Your Mindset, and she's making great progress and so is baby. So that is why I want you to help me share the news, okay? Let's talk to people about this episode and please leave me a review and follow me if you want to keep listening to these episodes. All right, let's dive into what I really wanted to talk to you about. Recently, in my personal life, I've noticed people around me really, really avoid, not all the people, but some people I love, having difficult conversations. And so it got me thinking, why do we do this? Why is it that we choose to not have the conversation when we want to talk about it, when we want a solution for it, when we want to address the problem, because not addressing it is terrifying. But we choose the fear of not addressing it because of something. So I really wanted to explore that. I've consulted with my journal. I have reflected on this and I thought there must be some beliefs that people who have a really hard time having difficult conversations believe. Okay. And so I'm going to break those down to you. And then I'm going to tell you what I do, what I think. I'm going to give you my own thoughts about why it's so important that we have the hard conversation. And then I'm going to tell you about Reset Your Mindset because I am opening a whole new cohort this summer based on popular demand. And I want to fill it up and I want you to be in it, okay? Again, I'm on a mission. I want to change and transform the lives of as many women as I can possibly touch. And you know what has been my experience? By working with the women I coach, they tell me, Olga, your work transpires onto our husbands, <laughs> our children. I've got clients reporting that their teen children are using the tools because they were taught by, the, by my clients. 
that their husbands are using them because they're finding so helpful. And so it's such a beautiful ripple effect. And I want to do more of that. That is my mission in this planet. Okay. That's what I came here to do. Can you help me? All right, let's dive in. Why is it that we don't have conversations? So I try to get into the mind of the person who has a hard time having difficult conversations. And I actually found that there might be some sort of similarities between this person and the person who has a hard time making decisions. Okay. You listen and you tell me if this is true. Okay. So first of all, the person who has a really hard time having a hard conversation. What is a hard conversation, by the way? Let's just begin there. In my books and for the purpose of this episode, we're going to call a hard conversation when we feel it's time to express our opinion about something that could be controversial. When we want to tell somebody that we care a lot about or not, <laughs> that we disagree with them and we're afraid of hurting them. When we have to make decisions that are important and therefore we have to have difficult conversations. Like my husband and I recently just went to resign and make some adjustments to our will, our testament, because we didn't want to not include some of the changes that have happened in our life out of this will. And in it, we had to decide who's going to care for our child should both of us pass away and who's going to stay with all the things. But definitely the conversation of who will care for our child brought me to tears, all of those possibilities, and then choosing who I think will care for him. Ah, nearly as good as I would, which in my books, nobody, <laughs> right? It was a hard conversation. I had to sit through it and I had to have the courage to have the conversation for his sake, for my child's well-being. And so that combined with these experiences I've had lately with the people around me who I've noticed rather be in silence than what they would think is a difficult conversation really inspired me to have this conversation because I would encourage all of my clients to have a hard conversation over staying in silence. And here's why. Okay. What are the thoughts? What are the thoughts that you must have about having a difficult conversation that then lead you to the behavior of not having the conversation, <laughs> of avoiding it? I think you must think if you have a difficult conversation, you, there is a chance that whoever you're having this conversation with will reject you. So there is a fear, underlying fear of being rejected should you have this conversation. I also think that you must think that having difficult conversations creates conflict and conflict creates separation because you don't want to separate from that person, whether that's your aunt, your family, like your sister or your husband that then you would rather not have the conversation, the difficult conversation, because it's going to bring up conflict and conflict always, according to this person's thinking, it's black or white ends in just separation. I also think that the separation is also the fear of abandonment. So I think that there's an underlying fear of abandonment, which is why then we choose to remain silent so that we also remain with the person. <laughs> So our brain goes into a very dramatic state of thinking where it's either white or black. Either you have a difficult conversation, let it all out, pack your bags and go, or you don't say anything and then you can stay, right? That's what the mind does. And I also thought you must think that having the conversation is going to make things worse. Ultimately, you think that being honest and upfront and facing the awkwardness the discomfort of the conversation and what the conversation might bring is going to make things worse. And because you believe that so strongly, you rather obviously stay quiet so that things stay status quo. If it's bad, but just for you, that's better than bad for everybody. That's what I think they think. Those are the four thoughts I came up with that I would think somebody who has tendency to avoid hard conversations must think. And I say they resemble people who have a hard time making decisions. Because they also fear being rejected. They also fear creating conflict and abandonment and making things worse. So they rather not make decisions. It's kind of like on the same wavelength. So what the person who thinks this way does, they do one of three things. They go in silence. They don't say a word. They forget about it. That's what we call just, you know, brush it under the carpet. Nobody sees it. It's good. We clean the house. And as long as it's clean, who cares, right? Or another thing that they might do is that they become passive aggressive. They don't say anything. 
but they will just make hints here and there. Oh, it must be nice that you have time to do that. Any kind of passive aggression. You might say things like, yes, I'm always the one who has to forget about me. Or it's always me who at the end of the day doesn't say anything so that I avoid conflict. You just become really grouchy and not very happy about it. But you're not saying anything, but you're saying something, but you're not saying what it is, right? That's something that I see happening often. There is this passive aggression going on with that relationship or sometimes with others based on what is happening in this relationship. So we take it off from like what conflict I'm having with my husband and I might become passive aggressive with somebody else who's asking something of me. And I'm like, can't you see I'm always giving? <laughs> it's not to them, but it doesn't matter. We just cross-contaminate all relationships with this. And lastly, that person who thinks this way, what he or she does is ignore her feelings. And so she's like, not only are we going to stay in silence, we're also going to ignore that this happened entirely. We're going to pretend that nothing ever happened. There's nothing to see. Move on. Okay. What is the result? So when the person has these thoughts, when the person has those behaviors, what I think the results are resentment feeling unvalued like you might walk around feeling that nobody sees your value in fact you might walk around think that nobody sees you that you're invisible that you don't count you might be the person who in all relationships is trying to be seen it's like please notice me you might always feel like people take you for granted you might say things about yourself like um too kind that's my problem. And then people take advantage of me. And at the end of the day, the biggest result of this, strange relationships, the opposite of what we want. So we stay in silence. We don't create conflict. We don't say the things that are bothering us, the things that we actually want to say. We don't let our inner voice speak out to advocate for ourselves because we don't want to create conflict and then potentially be rejected or abandoned. But what we do by stay, keeping it all in is actually we damage the relationship is no longer authentic because who you're showing up to that relationship is not real you, is acting you. And you're acting so that you can get the outcome that you want, which is to be loved and recognized and valued. So you see what's happening here? The same silence, they're not saying your thoughts, they're not speaking on your behalf, they're not expressing yourself either leads you to conflict because if you go into this passive aggressive energy, people match up that energy and there will be conflict and you will rest then. Once there is conflict, you'll be like, see, I knew they didn't value you. I am me. I knew that they were taking me for granted, that I didn't matter. So the relationship ends and you're like, there is my evidence. Okay. Or if you're not passive aggressive, but you're silent and you don't say anything and you ignore yourself and you ignore yourself at some point, something's got to give. And either the person on the other side loses all attraction for you because you're like non-existent. Where are you? Do you have an opinion about things? They also ignore you. They also match your energy. And that's when you're like, see, I'm not seen. I'm not valued. Why do they drop me when I've just been giving and giving? Other times, what I see happening is when we Let's use marriage because it's an easy one. When we, something is not working great for us, maybe the communication is not amazing. Maybe the chemistry is not amazing. Something is not working well for us. And we choose to keep it. And we choose to not involve our partner. What we think what might be a difficult conversation, something difficult to hear on the other side. We keep it. We ignore it. We internalize it because we're trying to save the marriage. In that process, we're not being honest. We're not expressing how we truly feel. We're also not asking for help. So the marriage is like you are choosing indirectly to let the marriage get to a point of natural conflict. And that's when life <laughs> will take decisions on your behalf. If you didn't have the courage to face that there was something that was bothering you, that needed to be addressed with your partner and potentially with other people helping you, you took that away from your marriage, the ability to restore it, to address it. And so what I've seen, most couples do, they wait until life does something. And normally when life has to intervene to do the thing that you knew you had to do, it's dramatic. That's when I've seen cases of infidelity. That's when I've seen cases where they're just going to a state of hate. I used to do child protection 
for many years. I did child protection. And it used to blow my mind that these parents who once were so in love and so together and had children and a home could hate themselves so much to the point that they needed people intervening them to just look at life a little bit differently, to look at the positive of that human that they once saw and were in love with. That, my friends, is the result of not being honest, of not showing up with courage into our relationships, all of them. I know I gave you marriage because that was an easy example, but this is true with your boss, with your team, if you're a leader. This is true for any relationship that you choose to engage with, with your cleaners, with anybody who works under you. If you never express how you feel, especially when you're not feeling like this is good, this is not good, you just leave it up to life to take over. It's going to be dramatic. I'm telling you, it's going to be dramatic. Ultimately, it's our responsibility to do something about the things that we don't like. You can choose to be a complainer. We have all been around complainers. They don't normally look for a solution. They just want to complain. I guess that would be the other side of uh, one more thought of why we don't have difficult conversations. We just don't see the point, but we'd rather complain about it to everybody. But the person we're having conflict with, which is also so not productive. Okay, so if that is you, let me just tell you what the real problem. The real problem, why you don't have difficult conversations is because you don't believe in your heart that you can handle that discomfort that might come with a difficult conversation. And you haven't thought far enough to think if you can handle the discomfort of the long-term result of not addressing and having that small conversation that is going to be uncomfortable. Because if you did, if you had seen the future and the future show you like this very messy divorce because you never once said this one thing, you would probably choose having the discomfort of a short, small conversation that could lead to solutions. Okay, so your real problems that you don't believe you can handle this comfort or that the other person can handle this comfort. So if what you want to tell your partner is like, listen, I feel that you're boring. I feel that like, you know, when we don't go out on dates or like when we do go out on dates, you've got nothing to tell me. Like your life is freaking boring. Do something fun. And you think that that's going to be very hurtful for the other person to hear. And then you stay quiet. You don't believe that they can actually handle the discomfort of hearing you say you're boring. So what I'm here to tell you is very simple. I hope, I hope that's the feeling you get out of my episode. And the solutions are simple because they are. We just haven't set a goal to do them. Okay. Sometimes when we think something is simple. We just don't see the need of setting it as a goal. And we're like, oh, it's a given. But it's not a given, okay? I just ran two days ago, 10 kilometer race. And because I normally run half marathon, I, did, I wasn't as disciplined with my training at all because I'm like, oh, it's only a 10K. It's only a 10K. My neighbor heard me say that. And he was like, only a 10K, 10 kilometers. It's enough distance. And I'm like, yeah, normally I run 21 and a half. So no, it doesn't feel like that. Well, let me tell you, I pay the consequences of that. <laughs> I had a cramp on my calf, eight out of the 10 kilometers. And I am convinced it's because I was too light on my training, okay? That my body was like, what are we doing here? So all of that to say, sometimes when we think something is difficult, we just easily pass the page as if it's a given and we don't set it as a goal. And I want you to set this as a goal, okay? Not because it sounds simple, that then you just ignore it. So given that we've established your real problem is that you believe you can handle discomfort, doesn't that feel already lighter? Oh, what if I was to look at difficult conversations as the only problem is not that I'm going to be abandoned or rejected. Actually, not addressing it will probably lead me to those outcomes that I don't desire. But if I notice it, that really what's really in my heart that's stopping me is one thought. Ladies and gentlemen, there is always only one thought that is separating us from something. <laughs> Nothing else. Just your thoughts. And your thought is, I can't handle the discomfort of disappointing somebody, of disagreeing with somebody, of having conflict with somebody for a short period of time. Then you now know the solution is one to change your thoughts about difficult conversations. So rather than having thoughts that say, I'm afraid of 
creating conflict. I am afraid of being abandoned or being rejected. I'm afraid of making this worst. What's the point? I'm going to hurt them. You can have different thoughts. And the one I normally like having is I rather have hard conversations so that I can give them and I a chance. The opposite, the same silence is actually intentionally not giving anyone a chance to improve. And I like to think I am a fair human. And so I like to give this fair chance to people. So the thought that I have about having difficult conversations also says it's better to have it now than later. When I am this many more years down the line of having had the same feeling, when I am more resentful, when I am now passive aggressive, when my body internally is mad, is pissed off at me because I've ignored myself for so long. When I used to do therapy and people come to me, it was normally past this point, okay? Not when things could be just resolved. It was past it. And there was always a sense of anger. And they would think the anger was towards the other person. I can't believe I let them take advantage of me this long. And what I always came to a conclusion was, you're not upset at them. You're upset at yourself for not having done something sooner. That you didn't get out of there sooner. That you didn't hear your voice sooner. And I'm not suggesting every time what we got to do is get out of our relationship. Not at all. Actually, I think most times the solution is to stay. Well, honoring yourself, honoring your voice by taking space in the relationship. That is really where your mind has to be at. And so my thoughts is that I gift my people by being my most authentic self. And that means I am courageous enough to have hard conversations. Because I want to give them an I a chance. If I hadn't had the courage to sit through a lawyer and go through all the potential scenarios where either I die or my husband dies or we both die, or the worst one was when they gave me a scenario of Matteo dying and I was staying alive. At that point, I couldn't even keep my, like, there were so many tears rolling. I was so uncomfortable with the whole conversation. But if I didn't have the courage to sit down and have this conversation, and something did happen, because let's face it, somebody's going to die at some point. Who will have to have this conversation then? Who am I leaving this to? Fate? I'll just hope and wish that somebody wants to have my child and that that seems to be the best person? <laughs> no way, right? Like you can see it that way. Like from the perspective of creating a document ahead of time that would just solve issues for those who we leave behind. But it doesn't have to be so dramatic. Telling your partner that you need them to spice it up, that you need them to take you out on dates, that you are actually contemplating leaving the relationship because of it. Have that conversation. And I know you probably hear this and <laughs> like the anxiety rises, your body feels warm. You're like, <laughs> have the conversation. Are you crazy? I want you to think of the alternative. Life taking over. And then you're having to look back as to why is this over? Why did it end in such a horrible way? And likely, if you don't do this work and this reflection, your conclusion is going to be to blame somebody and not to own it. Crap, I wasn't fully honest the entire time. I never expressed myself and my, my desires and my wantings and my bottom lines and my boundaries. So you are doing a disservice to you and to those who are in a relationship with you, any kind of relationship by avoiding a hard conversation based on the fear that you cannot handle the discomfort. I want you to grow your confidence in your belief to handle discomfort because eating it, not saying it, it's uncomfortable. Saying it is uncomfortable. Waiting for life to take over is going to be really uncomfortable. So there is going to be discomfort. However, you're capable. And if the discomfort comes from a really good place where you're just honoring yourself, your inner self is going to be so happy with you, you're going to be okay because you didn't ignore yourself. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I want to leave it like that. It's really short. I think I brought enough emotion and enough good points for you to hopefully decide from this day on that you are the kind of person who has the courage to have a hard conversation because what you will have to deal with then is just a little bit of discomfort versus what you would have to deal with. Your self-esteem for crying out loud. Like the people who need years of therapy have been ignoring themselves for forever. And now they've damaged their self-esteem because their self-esteem says, 
I speak and I speak and I speak and nobody hears me. You can do better. And you can certainly handle the discomfort of a tough conversation for the greater good of you and those around you. I love you. I'll see you next Monday. I want to invite you to work with me. We are opening the doors for the new Reset Your Mindset that starts on June 16th. The doors open on the 13th. And for three days, we're going to open the cart so that you guys can sign up and work with me for 12 weeks. On what? On doing all of these limiting beliefs you might have about life, about concepts that are so vital to your happiness, to your confidence, to the wealth of your relationships. And we can restart it. Exactly what the title says. We restart, we reset your mindset by cleaning the house from the limiting beliefs and providing you the right tools to create new thinking patterns that will give you the freedom to decide different thoughts, different behaviors, and therefore land in the most confident version of yourself. Join me. The link are in the show notes. I want to see you. I want to help you. I want to recreate what's inside your mind. Let's do it. Bye for now. Hey guys, Olga here. I want to talk to you about Reset Your Mindset because the next cohort is about to start and you are not going to miss out. I want you to learn how to implement ways in which you can think differently, break the mental habits that are holding you back, that are keeping you small. You were born to do great things. You were born to love yourself. And this is your opportunity to do so. This is a 12 week program where you will have weekly calls with me and with our group. You will be able to recognize that there's nothing wrong with you, that you're not broken. You don't need a psychologist. You need no fixing but you need to be empowered from you to you. And I know exactly how to do that. So I hope to see you inside. There's going to be you and another 11 women. It's a group of 12. It gives you personalized coaching. And I promise you, you will leave those 12 weeks feeling empowered and confident. If you do not, your money will be returned to you. So this is a guarantee that I have for you. You will feel more confident and more empowered by the time we're done. Cannot wait to see you in there. This is your time to sign up. The spots do go by really fast. So I hope you take action immediately. Head over to the show notes and sign up.